Hi, uh, my name is Teresa Solana, I am a Catalan writer and I have been invited to participate in this initiative to celebrate St. Jordi Online from my home in Oxford, where I have been living for the past uh, six years. Um, this is my latest book in English, the first prehistoric serial killer and other stories, published by Bitter Lemon Press and wonderfully translated by the literary translator Peter Bush, who has also translated some of the major classic and contemporary Catalan authors, as Josep Pla, Marcel Dureda, Joan Sales, or Kim Munzo. The first prehistoric serial killer is a collection of dark and funny stories, dark and funny at the, at the same time, in which uh, I use noir and humor to depict the crazy world in which uh, we live. Most of the stories are set in Barcelona, the city where I was born and where I have lived for the most part of my life. Barcelona is also the scenario of my series of novels with two amateur and crazy Catalan detectives. A not so perfect crime, shortcut to paradise, and the sound of one hand killing, also published by Bitter Lemon Press. I use crime fiction and the naivete of my inexperienced detectives to portray Barcelona and its inhabitants ironically. So my novels are dark, but not so dark because there is a lot of comedy in them. But today I'm not uh, going to talk about my books because I like to introduce to you one of my colleagues, Marc Pastor, and his best-selling book, Barcelona Shadows. Sorry, I don't uh, have a candle real book, so I printed the cover uh, to show you what the book looks like. And yes, as you can see, the ink in the printer is running out. Mark is a writer, but also a policeman who works solving real crimes with the forensic division of the Mossos de Squadra, the, the Catalan police. Yeah, he is one of those guys that knows all about uh, fingerprints, DNA, and all the stuff that makes it very difficult for us to write thrillers in which murders aren't arrested as quickly as they would be in real life. However, Barcelona Shadows is a story thriller set at the beginning of the 20th century. So forensics as DNA, cell phones or GPS to check alibis, for example, are not uh, an issue in this somber novel that shows us another Barcelona, a Barcelona without tourists, without sangria and souvenir shops. Marc Pastor has written several thrillers, crime novels, but also science fiction books, all of them very successful. One of, one of his uh, sci-fi novels, The Year of the Plague, has recently been turned into a film. Barcelona Shadows is his second novel, and uh, it was first published in Catalonia in 2008. It won the prestigious Catalan prize Crimes, Crimes de Tinta, Crimes of Ink, and since then, since then, Mark has become a very popular author and his novels, originally written in Catalan, has been translated into several languages. You probably know that all around the world, um, editors love to change the original titles of the books they publish. Sometimes because a literal translation doesn't make any sense for an English speaker reader. Sometimes because the literal translation doesn't, soon, doesn't sound good enough or could lead, could lead to misunderstandings. And sometimes simply because publishers want to lure the reader with a more attractive title. Since the city of Barcelona has become so popular in the last years as a touristic destination, lots of Catalan books translated into English or another language has the word Barcelona in the title or subtitle. My own novels, for instance, has the, the subtitle of Murder and Mannheim in Barcelona in the, in the English translation. Actually, the, ori the original title of Barcelona Shadows in Catalan is La Maladona, The Bad Woman, 
because the novel is about a very bad woman, a real murderer called Enriqueta Martí, also known as the Vampire of West Street. West Street, al carrer Ponent, is a street located in the Raval, an old neighborhood close to the popular Rambla of Barcelona, also known in the past as Barrio Chino, Chinatown. Not because there was a Chinese population living in the area, but because the comparisons that some Catalan journalists established a century ago between this neighborhood, the Raval, and Chinatown, Chinatown in San Francisco, California. The Raval was a poor and very crowded area, at, and at the end of the 19th century, the proximity of the docks and the presence of sailors had stimulated the concentration of a great number of brothels and activities related to prostitution. The Raval is our particular white chapel, and Enrique Tamarty, our local version of Jack the Ripper. The horrendous crimes of Enriqueta Martí, this is, this is the woman, huh? so, so his cri her crimes took place at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. Enriqueta Martí was a prostitute, a pimp, and a quack, and in her time people started to refer to her as a vampire because she used to kill children to prepare ointments, pomades, filters, and potions with their blood, bones, fat, and other fluids, especially for curing tuberculosis, so deadly and fearful at that time. Rich people paid a lot of money for her potions, and the legend said that some rich woman of Barcelona used to buy the blood of the children she killed to take baths, due the allegedly rejuvenating properties of children's blood. So yeah, Enrique Tamarty was a real character who he kidnapped, prostitute, and murdered children for profit. However, unlike Chuck the Ripper, she was identified, arrested, and imprisoned, where she died in 1913. In uh, Barcelona Shadows, uh, Marc Pastor tells us the story of this woman in a very original way. Death turned into a character is the narrator that recreates the crimes of Enriqueta Martí, committed under investigations carried out by two policemen, two characters created by my pastor that have nothing to do with the real policeman who arrested Enriqueta Martí. And I think this is one of the interesting aspects of this novel, because it's not an essay or a journalist piece about Enriqueta Martí, but a work of fiction based on a real character. Usually, when we talk about a thriller, we never explain the act, who is the culprit, or what happened to, to him or her. But in this case, because Enriqueta Martí is a historic character, and you can find all the information on the internet, it really doesn't matter if we already know how the story ends, that is, with Enriqueta Martí facing trial, facing trial uh, and, and a prison sentence. What we want to know as readers is, who was this woman? What prompted her to commit those horrible crimes? Was she pure evil or just a poor soul, the victim of a patriarchal capitalist culture that feeds the mistreatment, labor and sexual exploitation of children and women, as some feminist approaches suggest? Well, to make up your own minds, you must read Barcelona Shadows and reach your own conclusions. As I said a moment ago, uh, though Enriqueta Martí is a real character, it is important not to forget that Barcelona Shadows is a work of fiction, with fictional characters that interact with the real ones. It's literature, and good literature is not about the real truth, it's about the use of fiction to explore our own society, our history, beliefs, fears, feelings, kindness, evil, sense of justice, from this point of view, I think uh, Barcelona Shadow is a fascinating approach uh, to imagining the life of Enriqueta Martí and the people surrounding her from the perspective of uh, contemporary values. From their start in the mid-19th century, uh, detective, mystery and crime novels have always been a very popular genre with readers. 
and because of such popularity and capacity to and capacity to hook the reader. Crime fiction has been usually considered as minor literature, as a mere form of entertainment, as if uh, there was an insurmountable contradiction between culture and entertainment. Well, culture has always been ent entertainment, and the novels, poems, and plays that we read, that we read today to almost as the if they were sacred texts, I'm thinking of the Iliad, the Odyssey, or any of the Shakespeare plays, for example, all had the aim when they were created to entertain an audience. And if ever we needed entertainment is now, when we are locked in our houses and need good, bo good books, good films, music, and good music uh, more than ever. In Catalonia, in the last 20 years, there has been a boom of writers that decided to explore the possibilities of noir for telling stories. And Mark and I are part of this new generation of Catalan writers who are not afraid to write crime fiction and not ashamed of doing it in an entertaining way. As you know, Catalan is considered a minority language and because it is a language without a state and Catalan society is a bilingual society where Catalan coexists with Spanish and Spanish is a, is a very powerful language. For decades, in Catalonia, writers thought they should uh, be writing only serious novels, profound novels, not ones that entertain. Fortunately, over the last years, this attitude towards crime fiction has changed and today we have a huge variety of crime fiction originally written in Catalan from a very different point of view. Barcelona Shadows is published by Pushkin Press. I hope you will enjoy this novel and will allow you to discover a different Barcelona and explore the criminal mind of one of its most infamous killers.